Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up, what's up? It is May the 7th. It's a Tuesday, that means it is time for Gary and Chris time. What's up, man? Alright, so uh, today's show, first off, we're going to post another one that we did last week that didn't get posted because I keep having problems with the stupid video. We're having some uh, uh, technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying out all... Ca- so between the live stream and then trying to do these and trying to get MP3s ready for podcasts and whatnot, it's just, it's kind of a mess. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work with it, us all the time. Not not all the time, but again, it wouldn't be winning cures everything without problems. That's right. So if it all we, worked great, we embrace the chaos. It just, it just wouldn't be. <laughs> the show is brought to you by BetNow.eu. Use promo code Winning Fifty to get a fifty percent deposit bonus. Great online sports book, perfect for recreational gamblers. Go check it out for yourself. BetNow.eu. You can see everything right down there at the bottom on the video. So, betnow.eu, go check them out for yourself. Uh, on today's show, it's so because we always talk about this whole list of stuff that we're going to talk about, the only thing that we have planned today, because we're going to get to, it's, yeah, we're going to complete the list. It is a slow period right now in sports. We can talk NBA, we can talk hockey. We haven't gotten into the NBA, we really haven't gotten into hockey. And there ain't no sense in us discussing now's it now. probably not the right time to start. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back to our roots. I am enjoying it though. We yes, it has. It's been a lot of fun. Hockey's been fun. Uh, the Bruins last night that was you I know, know. I something know. else. Um, but we're going to get back to our roots. We're going to talk college football. I texted Chris last night. I said, "Yo, for tomorrow's show, why don't we discuss five games each? I think I said ten each, but you said 10, that's a little ambitious." And I, and I asked us to redact <laughs> that. So maybe a little ambitious. Seems like a lot of work. Uh, so we're doing five games each that we thoroughly enjoyed that changed college football history in some way. Or or, or they just mattered to us. Yeah, or mattered to us. I think all the ones that we've picked, though, I think, I think they, all had something to do with college football history, right? Yeah, I, I do think that. So, And I think that's, that's the purpose behind this is... If you, it didn't change the game, I think it was icon- iconic enough that... That People it outside of the fans of those two specific teams remember so much about those games. Yes. They are now, iconic. There are some that I have that uh, people may not fully are, remember. Are special to Gary. But it, not necessarily special to me, but that people, when they think back on it, think, man, that really, if, if one play had gone the opposite way. That's right. That changes the College football thing. history. It, yeah, it, yeah. We, we okay. We had these conversations off air. We'll have them on air now. So, yeah. So that's what we're talking about. That's, that's the list. That's the list for we're today. About to check it off. All right. So, do you want to go first, or do you want me to? Uh, I'll go first. I'll go first. Right. I've got the circle of death going on on my computer here. So let me go to the old phone where I have the my list. circle of death. See that little spinny. I do right see there? the spinny yeah. thing. Yeah. Everybody in my family is on my Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> Just pissing me off. I'm going to go, and this might this might be the least iconic, but this game matters. to You and I talk about this game a lot every year. It's one of the most important games every year. It's the 2016 Army-Navy game. This yeah. is the year that our entire life we were brought up and I think we're no different than most sports fans or college football fans, especially of this game matters. It's played on its own weekend. There are no other games to compete with it. It has the CBS front stage biggest game feel. And for most of our adolescent adult lives, it was one sided. Yeah. Navy just dominated army and and the funny thing is that like games were close. Yes, a lot of them were very close. But that's how those teams played. Fourteen years. Fourteen years of Navy won. winning was insane. And this was the year that it went the other way. Yeah. And and I rem- I remember so many nuances about it. I remember the uniform patterns that they had. Um, you know, what was I, that? Two thousand fifteen or two thousand sixteen? Two thousand sixteen. So. I'm gonna pull up the stats for you. See if and we'll, you can get anything going. I'm gonna pull up the game for you. I'll tell you the stats. Army won twenty-one to seventeen. Yeah, Army another, was another close game. Yeah, Army, Army no was seven outs. and five that year. Navy was nine and four. But I don't remember Army trailing much in that game. Did they kind of control it? 
Um, that's a great question. We just had the box score there. That's it. Uh, Army was up fourteen to nothing. Yeah. Then it was fourteen to ten. Navy went up seventeen to fourteen fourth with quarter. twelve minutes left in the fourth. And then so Ahmad the fourth. Ahmad Bradshaw scores on a touch or scores a touchdown with I six minutes left. To I go remember up. Army having to come back, but I, yeah, the the fact that it was twelve minutes left to go in the game is plenty yeah. of time. Yeah, uh, between the, the quarter, between started. the third quarter and the fourth quarter, uh, Navy rallied off seventeen right. straight points. Made you thought it was going to happen again. I know. And Army comes back. Ahmad Bradshaw runs it down the field. Bradshaw was uh, was a beast in this game, if I remember correctly. Uh, he was two out of four passing for 35 yards. That's a uh, stat line. Nine carries, 51 yards. You had Walker with 16 carries, 94 yards. Davidson, 28 carries for 87 and two touchdowns. I mean, it was – yeah, Army this, football. It was Army. It was and, Army Navy. Football. It was Army Navy football, I mean, and it was yeah. great. And it was great. And it was. It's one of my favorite games. So when you ask me, let's start thinking about iconic games. That was the first place I went to, and it wasn't any of these other ones, which I think are far bigger games, and and some of them have more meaningful impacts. I think that uh, I think a lot of people will be surprised with the games that we picked. Probably. So because I think we could do this. Multiple podcasts over. Oh yeah, and and pick if, five if different you games ask every me time. A month from now to pick five games that might, I I would probably come up with five different ones, but I, I do think, think it, that I would come in the same family. So there's one game I picked because of historical value in it changing the way the game is played. I probably could have reached down and picked three or four others. Oh yeah. And, oh easy. And, easily. And, and that that did the exact same thing. And so anyway. So what do you got? I my first game on here, Texas and oh, Texas so Tech good. from two thousand eight. Texas Tech wins thirty nine to thirty three. Texas Tech was number seven in the country. Uh, they they were nine and zero after this win. This was the Michael Crabtree catch. Uh, Graham Harrell probably still to this day the most important pass and the riskiest pass he has ever thrown. No doubt. That was uh, just a ridiculous. Ridiculous game. Final seconds ticking off the clock. Tech trailing by a point. Uh, Crabtree's in double coverage. And this is 08. Texas is undefeated at this point, ranked number one in the country. If Texas wins this game, they are the ones playing Florida in the national championship game right. at the end of the season. So you've got Texas against Tebow. And Oklahoma and big game Bob don't have a chance to blow another national championship game. That's right. Uh, and there's no telling that it, Texas was good enough that year because they beat Oklahoma. That's right. They could have won they, that game. They, they could have won, won the they national could've championship. Won that game. That's that right. could have been Mac Brown's second national championship game. Oh man, that would have rewritten. Or that, story. not game, but second national championship. That's right. That that, that changes. That would have rewritten sto- like like his career. Yes, absolutely changed the way we see Mac Brown today. And and that game in and of itself changed the way that we see Mike Leach. Oh, there's no doubt. Like that is the one that is Mike Leach's masterpiece, because they did not have the horses really to be able no. to compete in that game. I mean they they were up twenty two to six at the half, and Texas came storming back in the second half, and they actually outscored them twenty seven to seventeen in the second half, but even still, they were on fire in Lubbock that night. And I, I remember I was at a party with uh, with some friends of ours from high school and whatnot. Becky Bishop, hat tip, was up. And everybody else is hanging out, drinking, doing whatever, partying. They got music playing everywhere. I am in a barn with somebody's dad. I don't know who's. And I watched the entire second half on a TV that I swear to you was about that, about that nice. big. Black and white. Yeah. Had... Antennas had the rabbit ears going, and it was on ABC. The coat, got the coat hanger in the aluminum. Oh foil. yeah, gotcha. and I, and that's what we were doing. Yep. That everybody else is partying. I'm out there drinking Bud Light, watching Mike Leach, watching Mike Leach and, and show himself Mac to Brown. the world. Yes. Golly, so now Texas so Tech did go on and lose and get demolished by Oklahoma later on that season, but that game showed one game scenario. Anything could happen. That changed the entire outcome of the rest of the season. That's right. It gave Oklahoma a shot at the national championship. They didn't win it, but it kept Texas from getting Mac Brown a second national championship in three years, and that's a big deal. 
That is a big, big deal. All right, what uh, what you got for your next game? My next game is last year. The my LSU Tigers lose this game to Texas A and M, and I picked this game because I think this has historical significance. This will be the game that we look back on and say this changed the overtime rule forever. Okay, I think we had some big overtime games, some Arkansas, Ole Miss, historically like five years straight played just insane overtime games. Um, there, it's happened before. This was the game where, at the season's end, somebody said, "We got to change this rule." Yeah, we can't say that we care anything about these students. We can't continue the story that we can't expand college playoffs or any of that because of safety. If we're gonna let these kids play for six hours, yeah. <laughs> like like nobody, we say some crazy things and get away with it. As the administration over college football, we can't continue to do this. And I think this is going to be the game that, that it's looked back on. And it's going to change outcomes. I yeah. fully believe that if after three overtimes this thing went to one play and over, I think LSU wins that game. Yeah. I, and it could well, just it, be it, the it homerism would, in me. Five. Five overtimes. Yeah. But either way, you get to five overtimes in this, I think LSU can win the game. Yeah. I, well, I mean, we could have won it at any point. Well, I mean, I, I think I think LSU we're, wins we're the, the game. Up teen overtimes, but I, yes, I think LSU wins because they were dominant. They, we were the stronger team at that point in time, and then yeah. finally, it just there was no gas left, just none. Well, and that that game was a combination of uh, no gas left and A and M. Getting lucky. Well, multiple time times to even time get there. again. But, but the getting lucky, you still get there and you still get all these overtimes. Now, I want to see the overtime rule change even more. Like, I think five is too many. Yeah, still. I, I, you still wanted to go back to three. I wanted to. Maybe that's why I said three, is because yeah. that's, what, that's what I want. In a perfect world, if you can't knock it out in three turns, then we're going immediately to this thing. Yeah. Don't tell me you care about player safety and have them continue to play over and over again. Penalty kicks. Yeah. Well, it isn't really penalty kicks. We're letting them make a play. You still have to make a play to score a touchdown. No, no, no. I'm with you. And you could still do this 32 times. Yeah. Because, well, they stopped us. We stopped them. Oh, they scored. We scored. You could still have a ton of these, but at least it's one play scenarios. Yeah. And I think the ratings for it goes into one play scenarios goes through the roof. Yeah. I think – Everybody leaves the game they're on to find that game. Oh, yeah. Because anything can happen. Yeah, because it's one play wins it's the game. One play. That's that's the way it goes. And it won't last hours. No, you're right about that. Uh, my next game is TCU-Baylor from 2014. This gave us the Big 12 championship game. This got Urban Meyer his first national championship at Ohio State. Correct. Um yeah, there were so many things that went into this. This showed us uh, whether or not the – and you can still decide for yourself if the college football playoff is only interested in TV ratings and big-name brands or if they are interested in the best teams. And I don't think there was any doubt that TCU and Baylor both were great football teams. Yes, Ohio State went on to win the national championship. That's right. But Ohio State had a way worse loss than either one of these teams, and this game was a barn burner. It was incredible. 61-58. to 58. Uh, TCU goes up in the da, 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 in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left to play. They're up 58-37 to 37 at Baylor. And Baylor comes back to score 24 unanswered points. This was an amazing game. Yes. This was fun to watch. Yeah. This was a lot of fun to watch. Um but yeah, Baylor, uh, 61-58, they scored 24 unanswered, and had TCU not lost this game, had they just been able to put up one more score, yeah, Urban, had they been able to Urban get one get stop. That national title. I don't know who wins it, but Urban but, does. But, but Gary Patterson gets in the playoff. That's right. He, he gets to play for a national championship, and that TCU team that year was oh, mean. That's right. And they were on fire. I mean, the, everything about them was – what was the the quarterback's name that, that year? Boykin? Do you remember? I think it was Trevon Boykin. Yep, Trevon Boykin. Bam. And then Bryce yeah. Petty was the uh, was the other guy. Yeah. 
So, Boykin, 21 out of 47, 287 yards and one touchdown. Your, your first two picks are, are, my, are my, my two just complete infatuations of coaching. <laughs> I mean, I, for, for so long of my life, I have just worshipped at the feet of Gary Patterson and Mike Leach. Yeah. Boykin had 18 carries for 45 yards. Uh, Baylor, Bryce Petty, 28 out of 55, 510 yards, two, uh, two interceptions, but six, I was about to say. six touchdowns. Yeah. Six touchdowns. Six TDs. Insane. Uh, it, everything about this game was incredible. Like, it's just, a, you, you look back on it and you're like, man, and neither one of these teams got to play in the playoffs. Nope. They like, they, both, they basically canceled each other out. That's right. They both got let out. Who did, do you remember who Baylor lost to earlier in the season? Well, they at that point they were number five and they undefeated. They loss. were six and zero oh at that point. Um, but in two thousand and fourteen, well, no, they weren't undefeated. I think it was. Uh, they didn't finish undefeated. No, they didn't finish TCU undefeated. Um, they both had one loss, one loss, but Baylor at that point was undefeated. Oh, at the, yes, at that um, point. I'm sorry. Who did, who did they finish losing to? Was it Oklahoma? I believe it was Oklahoma. Okay, yeah. And and I'll say, be able both to tell of you. them have. Uh, like it, this is when we really started no losses. No, 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 no. They lost at West Virginia the next week, forty-one to twenty-seven. And and West Virginia was not that good that year, seven and six. Okay, that's so, a tough loss. So that's a tough loss. But if you look back at it, Virginia Tech, I mean, they finished the year what six and seven, I believe. Correct. That West Virginia and let's see. West Virginia actually finished seven and five, but lost the. Yep, they lost in the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, they year. lost the bowl game. And so they were seven and five. So that was actually a better loss than what Ohio State had. Correct. So you could say, like, it really TCU had the better. Oh no, no. I mean, no. they lost on the road to a top five team Correct. by three points after being up by twenty one. Yeah. So, it, but that changes everything about the Big Twelve. Uh, they're not chasing, trying to get to the the college football we playoff. We never see a Big Twelve title game. Yeah, we never see a Big Twelve title that game. That caused the Big Twelve title game. Yep, that gave us an extra game every year. That's right. That uh, that they That's were having right. trouble selling. Crazy. So- <laughs> Just crazy. All right, what's uh, what's your next one? My next one. Is just one I think as soon as I say it, every fan immediately knows, and unless you're an Oklahoma fan, you loved 2007 Fiesta Bowl. We got yeah. the flea flicker. We got the Statue of Liberty. All the plays that you run in the backyard. We we your got entire the, life. We got the belief that a smaller school, little guys doing big things. Yeah, a smaller school can beat a big boy. It, this was your David and Goliath moment. And this was uh, this was what after the 07 season. It's yes. So it, everything about 07 was oh, crazy. Yeah, that anyway, was the, that was crazy. Um, that was an insane year. But th- this is the same Oklahoma team that beat number one Missouri. 38-16 to 16 in the Big 12 championship game. Like, Correct. But they finished, uh, what, 10-2? and two? I guess 10-3 after, after that loss. after that loss. Uh, but, yeah. The, this kind of was when I began to recognize Big Game Bob is not really a good nickname for him. No. No, 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 no. he had lost a couple of national title games coming up to that. He had won one. He did have a national title yeah, win. in his second season. His second season, that's right. Taking over for Switzer. And well, not Switzer. Not, uh, 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 John Blake? Is that who it was? I'd have to Google it. But that's a, still locked up. So. That's a great question. He took over 1998 Oklahoma head coach. I'll be able to you find got that. that. So, I, I just – not I don't just remember that last final drive for Boise to win it. John Blake. John Blake, that's who it was. Um but uh, I I remember so much about that game, but that final drive is the most iconic thing. I mean, how many times playing football in the backyard where you only had like eight guys anyway, do you practice? Are you here and you goofing off about like – I remember in like not peewee football obviously, but like in middle school, I guess that would be considered JV football. Yeah. Like us begging the coaches. Hey, let's just try, like, the fumble rooski. Let's yeah. try the, the <laughs> I had a feeling flicker. you were going to say fumble rooski. Like, let's try these things because 
we're seventh, eighth grade. Like, we want yeah. to do fun stuff. I didn't want to down block. No. I didn't, I didn't want to run the ball off guard every time. Like, let's do something fun. And I'm watching, like, like a real college football game against a legit team, and they're running these plays. And the way they ran them was just so iconic. That's a, they. So the running back that proposed to his girlfriend after yeah. the game, that was Ian Johnson. I'm not a fan of that move, but I. I oh, but everybody it. remembers it. Oh, no, I, I remember it, and I remember what he looked That's like. A, and remember you, she do you looks remember like. what the quarterback's name was? It's a fun I should, name. I should, no. It's Jared Zabransky. No, I don't remember that. Jared Zabransky. The name I remember from there. It's a, he, is, he is a. It's uh, Chris Peterson. Well, everybody remembers I mean, Chris but Peterson, you don't but say like, like that, that's. But Jared Zabransky was the one that was like, it, he made it happen. That's right. He, no, he started the run of of Boise State quarterbacks. So it, Kellen Moore came after him. Kellen Moore was a better version of him, much better version of but, him. But but never had a moment like that. Oh one. no 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 no. No. So that was. There's never been a little guy versus a big guy in college football moment like that. No, on a I national agree. stage where that many people were watching, like you might be able, somebody might pull some obscure game from the 40s or some regular season game where like I was at, we, we talked about this, one of the games I thought about was Memphis, Tennessee, where Little Memphis beats Peyton Manning in the Liberty Bowl. Like, but that's a regular season game. And that's your little brother beating up with a big brother kind of thing. Yeah. Like, that happens. And it happens kind of all through sports on a regular basis. That on on that type of stage, I just it, it was just it was just something that I'll never forget. Let's see, Boise State ended up, and that was two thousand seven. Was that after the 07 seven two? It was the 07 seven two. Correct. Let's see, Boston College that year. BYU went eleven and two. Boston College went eleven and three. Kansas went twelve and one. West Virginia went eleven and two. BYU still in the Mountain West then. Boise State finished eleven and two. Um, yeah, TCU still in the Mountain West at that point. No, no, um, BYU. BYU. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they sure weren't were. independent yet. They were not independent as of yet. Okay, didn't think so. And so, but yeah, oh seven. There was there was a lot of crazy, uh, crazy stuff. And we've what done a podcast in the past about the oh seven season a little bit. Yeah, just to tell, we could probably go back and I mean, you could do rehash it that, again. That is the craziest. All right, so that was uh, that was number three for you. Number three for me, 2011, Iowa State 37, Oklahoma State 31. This is the game that gave us the playoff. This is. Iowa State is down 17-7 uh, to at the half and then 24-7. to And they come back, tie it up in the fourth quarter, and – Oklahoma State misses a a chip shot 28-yard field goal that would have won the game. Now, the day before this game, the Oklahoma State women's basketball coach and one of the assistants were killed in a plane crash. Remember that? Which, if you wanted to blame it on that, then you can. But when they raced out to a 24-7 lead, I don't think it was that. I think that Iowa State put the clamps on them. Uh, who was the coach for Iowa State that year? Uh, Paul Rhodes? Is that his name? He's uh, he was an assistant at um, an assistant at Arkansas. I think it was Paul Rhodes. But either way, uh, Iowa State in that game took them to two overtimes. Oklahoma State could not get it done. The loss with Brandon Whedon and that whole bunch. Uh, what was the guy's name? Randall. Uh, Ten carries, forty-nine yards. I'm trying to look up the box score. Joseph uh, Randall. I mean, Oklahoma State was stacked that year. Oh yeah, they were absolutely stacked. And you go through and look at it. I mean, Cooper Blackman, like just so many big names for Oklahoma State, and. Iowa State threw for 376 yards, three touchdowns. Aired it out. And and had 192 yards rushing. Oklahoma State could not stop them. You don't want to go to Ames, Iowa on a Friday, guys. Just period. 
we've had that conversation. Oh my Ma- goodness! Many a many a times given out. Well, and and at this point, like Iowa State was still supposed to be trash. Yeah, I was about to say they. This guy, they Iowa, were still the little guy. This was on November the eighteenth. This got Iowa State to six and four, yep. and got them a bowl game, which at the time was completely unheard of. But this game gave Alabama life. Put them back to number two in the BCS. They never relinquished it. And it gave you LSU Alabama part two, That's right. which gave us the, the college playoff. football playoff. That's right. And so at, at that point, everybody was so mad about the fact that uh, the two best teams can't be from the same conference. That's right. Like, well, actually, yeah, sometimes they can. You know, it's not every year, it's not most years. That's right. But that year in particular, yeah, I think so. Nobody would I think so. That. All right, what uh, what is game number four for you? Game number four for me is the 2003 National Championship game, the Sugar Bowl. LSU and Oklahoma. LSU, Oklahoma. I think this game has to have some importance. If Nick Saban is going to go down as the greatest college football coach of all time, I think his first title has to matter. I think I could agree with that. This is one that – in my opinion, comes with a little bit of skepticism because this is a game where, once again, a national title that we don't think Oklahoma belonged in. The score showed it didn't belong. The game showed they didn't belong. And USC, who had an incredible season that year, got left out. Yep. My next game actually has to do with that. So, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah I bet say we probably should have lined this up because your game – has to do with how Oklahoma got into this, one of the ways, and then what happens if they don't. Yeah. So, but no, I just think this that this game was in historical factors. If Nick Saban ends up finishing, everybody's only going to remember what he did at Alabama. But you got to remember where he started. He started at, at Michigan State. In well, and the, the LSU like this national championship is what really got him the Alabama job. No, there's it's, no question. It's why if Alabama he doesn't have this. He never. Alabama doesn't offer him the job. Well, and, and they may offer him the job, they're but not they but they don't. Him out of the NFL. Well, and they're not sitting and waiting for him no. to get done yeah. with an NFL they're, season. They're not doing what they did to get him. Yeah, they went to at Miami and said, "We're not leaving without you." Yeah, and and that's just how it went down. You don't do that for a coach that doesn't have a ring. Exactly, but but you got a ring, and. You are successful in that conference, and you got to remember LSU yeah. was not a powerhouse before then. No, we were, we were a good program. It was a good program in we like the fifties and 60s. it was what they call a sleeping giant. Right. Eh, maybe, but we we weren't. Nobody was putting LSU in the marks of Florida and Georgia and Alabama and Auburn and Tennessee in the SEC. Right, we weren't. We were the equivalency of our biggest rival was. For the longest time, Ole Miss, and yeah. that's that's the size program we were. We we had about the same ac- academic budget, and and we we ran a very similar style program. And every now and then we beat a big boy, yeah, and we competed with everybody. But you know we had just as good a chance of finishing six and six as we did, you know, four and you know. No, you're whatever. right. So, yeah, no, that's uh, but between uh, Jerry Donardo and Curly Hallman and that bunch at LSU beforehand. It, everybody knew LSU had talent. Everybody knew Louisiana had talent. Nobody could figure out how to bring it all together, and Saban was able to do that. This he put a fence the, around the state. That's right. This was the start of me believing you can finally win this sport without a quarterback. Yes. Oh, because, 100%. Because, because Matt Mock went on to be a dentist after this game. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he didn't he didn't go play in, in, in well, no, he, the Canadian League. Hold on. He, Matt Mock was in the NFL, wasn't he? Nah, I, I, I will be shocked if Matt Mock – was in the NFL. I, I think he was in the NFL the for a little bit. The greatest disappointment of my life in like falling in love with a player and thinking they were the next somebody was from this game, and it was Chad Lavallee. I thought Chad Lavallee was going to be the next Reggie White. I was so enamored with how big and strong that guy was. That's, that was such a fun name, too. He was I amazing. I, when, when Jason White won the Heisman Trophy, all I kept thinking was is, Chad is going to you oh, yeah. like you're a chicken leg. He was going to sit on him. He just kill him. Uh so Matt Mock, Denver Broncos 2004. Did he actually play? Tennessee Titans 2005 through oh, 2007. He, he was a little backup career. Um, he had a little bit of a Let's see. Of a career. At at Tennessee, he finally got to touch the field in 2005. 
He went 15 of 27. In one game. He started one game. He played in two. Okay. But he had 136 okay. yards, zero touchdowns, one interception, ran the ball seven times for 39 yards. Well, I know when he left LSU, or well, his after his senior year, after he won the national title, he he was going – to, he was enrolling in dentistry school. Yeah, two, to be a dentist. Mark is a 2011 graduate of the University of Colorado School of Dentistry. There you go. Currently works as a dentist in yeah. Aurora, Colorado. working on folks' teeth. Believe that. Well, he's got a pretty smile, too, man. No, he's a, he was the – Matt Mark is a fun individual. I had a hard time believing LSU could actually ever win a national title because my entire life, still to this point, we've never had an elite top echelon quarterback. Out of yeah. all the guys that come through there, we've had some good dudes. I'm a, I like Joe Burrow. I'm you, you're you're I'm not going to say that uh, your boy, who was that that uh, that flamed out? Who well, Matt Flynn? About? No. Matt Flynn no. had the NFL career. Matt, I mean, Matt Flynn did. Uh, Jamarcus Russell. Oh, God, he, no. He's the – hey, if you want to talk about changing the history of football, LSU, he changed the rookie pay scale every, by himself. Everyone at LSU knew what was going on there. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, we laughed all about it. I almost, like two years ago, bought me a signed Jamarcus Russell Raiders jersey I had. I found online at an auction site for like 20 bucks. You like, should have. And like they had it like all nice and framed. I was like, if I lost some weight, man, I might just wear that. I'm going to break that frame <laughs> open. I'm wearing this. It ain't, no, it ain't worth anything. Can I, can I get it for $10 if you keep the frame? Like, if you keep the frame. Like, I don't need the frame. Now, that makes sense. Anyway. That makes sense. All right. Uh, next game up for me. Let's that was see. Homer Th- pick. This, is, this is to go with Chris's pick. Yeah. You're, we should have done these in back to back order. Oklahoma 20, Alabama 13 in the 2013 season. This was early. I think the second week yeah, in uh, – this, this was before, yeah. like, regular conference play starts. Alabama finished 4-9. Oklahoma played in the national championship game. This is what I call the glory years, by the way. Yeah, when Alabama was going 4-9 and and had Mike Shula as a coach. <laughs> like, three months after Mike Price gets in trouble for he was, banging strippers he down was in this close Pensacola. to being – Y'all's coach forever. Oh, Mike Price? No. Or Mike uh, – well, Mike Shuley, yeah, all he had to do was get Tebow. If he if he wins this game, uh, yes, changes the which outcome is, of which Alabama. Which is why I brought this yeah. game up. And changes then, Alabama's and trajectory. Tebow, it's over. But it but it also sets us up to where in 20, or 20, or 2003, if I can talk straight. That's okay. You got 2003, a lot of numbers going. We, We've gone back and forth in history yeah. a lot. 2003, if we go on and get Oklahoma beat – because they did lose at the end of the season, but the BCS was so jacked up back then. Remember, they lost 35-7 to yeah, in the Big smoked. 12 championship game and got just demolished by Kansas State. Yeah. And the BCS numbers were still so strong that they still got into the national championship They game. were the number one team. Yeah, because of the BCS. was technically the number three team. Well, in not most, in the BCS. And not in the BCS, obviously. But in, in the polls. In the polls. Uh, but if you, if you go on and get Oklahoma beat here yeah. – Here's what had to happen for Oklahoma to beat a really, really crappy Alabama team. They had a so they had a 46 yard touchdown pass in the second quarter with four minutes left to go up 13 to three. Nice. Uh, and that was in the second quarter. In the third quarter, Alabama comes out. Brody Croyle throws a pass for a touchdown, a 20 yard pass for a touchdown to make it 13 to 10. And that's with less than seven minutes left in the third quarter. Alabama has got them stopped again. Oklahoma on like fourth and nine or whatever from their own 25. Fakes a punt that goes, you know, 20 yards, whatever it is. Got them the first down. Got them the first down. And then could have went next play, yards. I think it's the next play, 47-yard touchdown pass. Damn. It makes it 20-10 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Alabama – Kicks a field goal, has a shot to go in late, whatever. But remember, Bama was awful Jeez, in 03. Freaking white. And and Oklahoma sneaks out of Tuscaloosa with the narrowest of margins. They get a one. Maybe t- this is where big game Bob got his it, name. It from. is the only one score game for Oklahoma that season. Other than uh, I believe it was I believe Oklahoma actually. Well, the LSU game was a one-score game. 
Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, but but they also got their brains beat in in another game. I'd say they lost uh, a couple no, games. Oklahoma in nope. That was the only that was the only one score game. I was about to say like as far as games game. that they won. Yeah, it was oh, the okay. only one score game that they had because everybody else they beat by double digits. Every one of them. And when they lost, they lost by double digits. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, that you, that would have changed a if, whole lot because if, if Pete Carroll wins that game, it gets in and and somehow wins that. Like his. His legacy, his legacy is completely situation. different. I mean, and, it really and does. Saban change. never gets the Alabama job. No. Like everything changes based on Alabama, Oklahoma from the second week into that season. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it was. It mattered. Yeah. And you don't know that Alabama season couldn't have turned around. Several of those wins that, that y'all had, our losses you had, well, yeah, could, have, the, could have become wins. The trajectory of the believe, of the program. I believe in momentum. I know we live in a day of analytics, and, and, and there are so many analytical dudes out there that will tell you momentum's not a thing. Like, And they have stats to back it up, and I'm not smart enough to come with stats. I know this. I've watched this thing happen just too long for me not to believe it. Alabama that season. I think I'm, I'm not see. a fan of, of, of quoting Bear Bryant, but – they, Vince Lombardi said this. Bear Bryant said this. All the greatest coaches I remember listening said it. Losing is habitual. So yes. is winning. Winning is habitual. They they lose to Oklahoma that week. They they beat Kentucky the next week, and this is when Kentucky was awful. Oh, yeah. that was. Yeah, um, they're definitely running out basketball kids to play football. Yes. And then two weeks after Oklahoma, they lose at home to Northern Illinois, 16 or 19-16. They lose at home to number nine Arkansas, thirty four to thirty one. Yeah, it was a great Arkansas team, though. Yes, and you know, and it continues on from there. They lost to at Ole Miss, forty three to twenty eight. That was uh, that was Eli's yeah, senior that year. Was, I was about to say uh, they lost to Tennessee in five overtimes when they gave up a fourth to nineteen that would have won the game. I was sitting in Tuscaloosa at that game. Uh, they lose to number three LSU later that year, twenty seven to three. That was the year that. Who was the guy that y'all had that year? Josh something, the receiver that had 280-something yards receiving. Oh, um. I mean, just. Played for Washington. Yeah, he demolished oh, Alabama secondary. But, yeah, I mean, it's. It, really it, I think a lot of things actually change that year. So, let's see. I'll be able to tell you here momentarily. Um, let's see. Wide receivers. Junior Joseph. Uh. That's not who I'm talking about. Is it Michael Clayton? No, Devery Henderson. Dwayne Bow was on that team. Let me see here. Dwayne Bow was a freak. Dwayne Bow was the best receiver out of all. Um, early Dorsett was a big one. Brandon LaFell. All these guys played in the league. Um, was that? That's you're looking at the 07 roster. I'm talking about 03. Oh crap! I thought you said uh, no, no. The, o- the O three season uh, box score. There's no box score available for that. Yeah, I couldn't find one either. That was my first. No team stats available. That's incredible. It was. I think it was Michael Clayton. Because a lot of these that I'm seeing on here were uh, were Michael Clayton. Okay. And so, but yeah, that's that game. Alabama, Oklahoma, 2013. Oklahoma wins. That changed a whole lot about that season because you could get Pete Carroll and Nick Saban to meet up, and I don't know that they ever did, did they? No. I mean, that was two iconic coaches at that point that, I mean, we really should have gotten that matchup. We Dever really should have gotten Dever Henderson played in the league for a while. Yeah, Dever Henderson was incredible. Dwayne Bowe, yeah, that would have been – it would have been one of those – and then Clayton. Those are the only guys that – Played in the NFL off of that roster, off of that uh, wide receiving core. Let's see. Michael Clayton had 12 receptions for 130 yards that game. Another massive that was, defensive lineman. That was not Marcus, the one. Marcus Spears was on this team. Love that guy. Was it 2004? Alabama. Now that running, back, that running back core on that team was uh, – Cause I was at this, I was at that national championship game, and got to high five Justin Vincent, got to high five Joseph. Uh, uh, oh God, I was about to say Madai. Um, Joseph Adai, I remember him. That was a that was a great game. I'm trying to think. There was a year that maybe it was 
2006, when LSU threw for just ridiculous yards. But it don't look it don't look like that's right. Maybe it was 2 I don't know. I, I don't, this is terrible podcasting. Ter- ter- yeah, bad radio. Terrible podcasting. Well, you want me to go to my last one while you're looking that yeah, stuff go, up? Yeah, go on ahead. My go last ahead. one is what has historically known as the greatest college football game ever played. I don't know that it is, but it's it's – I'm willing to give it that title in my personal opinion. It's the USC Texas it, National Championship. Let me get back to back? hold on it, it? just just for un momento. Go ahead. It was Josh Reed. Reed, that was 2001. It. And he did LSU. Play for Washington. And Josh Reed had 293 receiving yards against Alabama. In one game? In one game. 300 yards. Yeah. Had had 293 Rohan Davey had 528 passing yards with two touchdowns. Uh, you, do you remember your running back's name in that game? So what year was it? 2001. Ooh. You're going to love this. Okay, give it to me. LeBrandon Tofield. I don't remember that. You don't remember LeBrandon Tofield? I remember Tofield? the name, but I would have never guessed that. That's He had 82 yards was, rushing I, in that game. I thought he was before that. I thought he was in the 90s. Like I guess late nineties. But well, I mean, yeah, I guess it'd be like ninety nine through oh one or whatever 01, it was. But maybe 01, yeah, this was in know. Tuscaloosa. This was two thousand one. How many yards did Tofield have? Tofield had eighty two in that right. game. Um, but it, yeah, it was it, LSU had up? LSU had eighty three yards, yards total rushing, but it had five hundred twenty eight passing. Josh Reed had two hundred ninety three. I mean, that's that's other world stuff. Had that's, 19 receptions. That's Sir Nicholas Saban saying, hey, I know DB's better than anybody on the planet. And you ain't got the, none. These, these guys ain't got none. Yep. So uh, we're just going to cut them up. It's and, and Looking back at it, I mean, you you know what Saban loves to do. He loves to run the football. That's right. The fact that I, was, I would have never guessed the fact that, that that happened during Saban's years. When you were yep. looking for a receiver – that had big numbers. I'm thinking less mile years. I'm oh, he, he's Josh Reed still owns the record. Yeah, I'm thinking later on. Well, yeah, to, owns the record. Of course, he owns the record. The record of anybody we're, like most total not, receiving yards against Alabama yeah, by one player. We're that's probably the most total receiving yards in a single game ever in LSU. Well, maybe in in LSU history. In LSU history, no, and no, guys, no, teams like. Teams like Baylor and whatnot. Well, yeah, they, because but but we're not that. We never have been that. No, no. But, that, that's but there not, was. We between, don't have quarterbacks, Gary. It, we it, have defensive linemen. We but, it, see, but y'all had linemen. y'all had Rohan Davey and Jamarcus Russell back to back. True. Rohan Davey in 01, That was the like LSU was eight and four. I think that year yeah. and went into the SEC championship game. Knocked off. It, Tennessee was going to play for national. That was another know. one we probably could have tossed in there. Yeah. Because um, that's really what started the Saban thing. Was when he knocked off Phil Fulmer because he hated Phil Fulmer. I know. Um, and so that one really could have started the uh, the whole Saban thing, where he won an SEC championship with an eight and four LSU team, and knocked Tennessee out of playing for another national championship. Yeah. Who boy, that changed two legacies right there. Because uh, Phil Fulmer, you go to another national championship game, oh, you win yeah. one more. Oh, he need, well, he definitely doesn't get fired or it, not well pushed out. Not, it not pushed down. out as quickly as he was. If he had won another national championship oh, in 01. him several more years. Yeah, because recruiting stays up. That's right. I mean. Well, yeah, because everything, everything. Everything changes. changes. Everything changes. All right. All right. Back to, uh, I had back a, to yours. I had a great, fantastic buildup for this game. But Sorry. at the end of it, it. No, it's fine. It's it's the greatest game. USC, Texas, 2005 national championship Young, in the Rose Bowl. Just, I mean, this is a game where one man says, I'm pulling my thing out, and I'm showing it to the world, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. Leinart had an incredible game through for almost 400 yards, like like 370-something yards, uh, three, four touchdowns. Vince Young counted for three touchdowns. Where was his rushing yards? 200 rushing yards for Vince Young. On 19 carries. On 19 carries. You know what's crazy? You look at this. That's it. That was it. Texas had 41 points and not one. Passing touchdown. No. Not a no. single one. But Vince threw for 270 yards. Yeah. He counted for almost 500 and, yards and by himself. look at his completion percentage. Yeah. No, it 75%. Was, yeah. yeah. Like, dude, was 30 out of 40. Just just a, a like. <laughs> just a incredible game. Back and forth. And 
not just a great game, but one of those games that gives you star power. Well, I mean, I mean the, the names themselves. Yeah. Are I mean, that's a big deal. The Rose Bowl, big deal. This is easily the biggest college football game of all time. I I, I think so. Yeah. I really do. I'm one of these guys that doesn't like the idea that the Rose Bowl gets called the granddaddy of them all. And like, if this game was played as the Fiesta Bowl or the Orange Bowl, it's still the greatest game because uh, but, of what But the we Rose got. Bowl just, just tosses the cherry on top. I hate that. I I, I hate that. Yeah, you can hate it all you want to, but I'm telling you, yeah, the fact that it is the Rose Bowl makes it that I much know. bigger. I know it does. I know it does. This, this was an iconic game. Just for sheer pleasure of... Wasn't this Keith Jackson's last game, too? I fo- yeah, it probably was. I think it was. I think it was Keith Jackson's last game. Let's see. Keith Jackson last game. Da-da-da-da. Whose last game was the Texas Rose Bowl win in 2005. Yep. That is correct. That's crazy. Just a, Just an incredible game. From top to bottom. Oh, yeah. I wonder what does Pete Carroll's legacy look like. If he wins this game? If he wins this game. Well, he probably never leaves USC. There are so many times. I mean, USC got left out of that that, that LSU, In the Oklahoma yeah. game. Like, his, his resume in college football could – Could, could look, look a lot different. Not just look a lot different, but could have gone unmatched. I don't know, man. Saban's got a lot right but now. To say, <laughs> do, but does Saban ever come back? I mean, if some of, if some of those things happen, we talked about it. Oh, the yeah. If, if, effect, in 03, if some of those things happen. Yeah, in 03, if USC beat Saban for the national championship, then Saban's run never happens. That's right. I don't know, man. That's uh, I mean, that's it's a crazy it's, thing. I mean, the, the butterfly effect of what these guys could, could look like and end up like. It's just pretty impressive. Should we call this the uh, the college football butterfly effect? I mean, it it, 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 it kind of fits. It's funny to it's funny to think about how this domino affected that domino, and that's how we ended up here today. Because there's another part that could say if if Saban really is this great of a coach at all levels, and let's say eventually he could have gotten Miami turned around, that's the same division as Belichick and Tom. Yeah, are they what we see of them today? Well, what what was he three and one against? He was Bing? three and one against Bill, but the the Dolphins historically have a record to where they split with the Patriots. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, but, like even today, the Dolphins are garbage. But they still split they, with. They the still Patriots. they still win in Miami because the Patriots can't play in humidity. It's just the one thing that Bill can't emulate. He can't manufacture ninety that makes degree sense. humidity. Makes sense. All right, that was your last. That's game. That's it. That was my last game. I'm gonna do a weird one for my fifth one. Okay, I like weird. All right. Oregon Cal from 2010. Oregon 15 to 3 or 15 to 13 winners in this game. Uh what year? 2010. This yeah. is the year that Oregon got to play for the national championship. It's so strange that it was that low of a scoring of a Chip Kelly team. Oh, 100%. Like when you told me that I was like 2003? What year? I, no, because that can't be Chip Kelly. Here's Oregon's um scores from that season. Let's see, 15. Oregon 2010 football schedule. I'll I'll roll through it for you. Now the 13 makes sense because that defense actually played pretty well that year. This was not one of those, just you know, we score 100 so, and you score 90. They beat New Mexico 72 to nothing. Yep. They beat Tennessee 48 to 13. Yep. That's in Knoxville. Now, I remember that. They beat Portland Very State clearly. 69 to nothing. I had at, tickets to that game. I didn't go to the. Oh, the Tennessee game? Oh, you should have gone. I've should've never gone. been to Neyland Stadium. I want to go when I'm – my first oh, time, I want to go when I'm going to cheer for Tennessee, and I knew it wasn't going to be that day. I am, well, that of course, the diehard Alabama fan, yeah. but Knoxville is a gorgeous I know. place. I've been there. It is gorgeous. I've, I've watched games from houses there, never bars or tailgating. Yeah. Go oh, the, the bars are great, too. Oh, good Lord. Uh, <laughs> at Arizona State, 42-31. to 31. Number nine, Stanford. They beat fifty-two to thirty-one at Washington State, forty-three to twenty-three. UCLA sixty to thirteen. USC fifty-three thirty-two. Washington fifty-three to sixteen. Yeah. At UCLA, what? See, what was that? Score? Sixty to thirteen. God. Yeah. Hey. Uh, and then and then turn around and go to USC and hang fifty-three on them. Yeah. Beat them by twenty-one points. 
beat Washington was the Pete, next week. Pete wasn't there still. Pete was gone, right? He's in the NFL. In 2010, yeah. yes. Yeah, I, think I think that was Lane gone. Kiffin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was Lane Kiffin's yeah, first year. I was about to say, that Pete gone by then. So yeah. they beat Washington 53-16 to and then turn around and go to Cal. And it's in Berkeley. And this game was on, are you ready for the network? Oh, gosh. Versus. You remember that? So they they had ESPN two games, the Oregon Sports Network, Fox Sports Network, ABC, Oregon Sports Network, ESPN, ABC, ABC, and then Versus. The closest game that they play all season is on Versus. Nobody got to on, see it. On November the 13th. Exactly. Nobody got to see it. Uh, they turn around the next week, go to Arizona, beat them 48-29. to They beat Oregon State 37-20, to and then they get into the BCS championship game. If Cal had won this game, which Cal ended up the season 5-7, and seven, not a great team. Not a great team. But if they win this game, and it was possible because in the fourth quarter, Cal missed a field goal that would have made it 16-15. to It was a... 29-yard field goal yeah, that they missed. Yeah. If Cal wins this game, TCU, as a member of the Mountain West Conference, gets to play in the national championship game against Auburn. I feel like some chicanery would have went down. You can say that if you want to. Because I just know the people that run this sport. Here's the, the final rankings. I feel like I know them well. The BCS final rankings, or TCU went 12-0. Stanford went eleven and one, Wisconsin went eleven and one, Ohio State went eleven and one, Arkansas went ten and two, Michigan State eleven and one, Oklahoma ten you don't and two, think Stanford would have got et cetera. The there. Uh, no, Har- I don't. Harbaugh's there. Is that Andrew Luck year? They got a lot of star power. That BCS, wasn't Andrew Luck year, wasn't it? BCS would have pulled some chicanery and they would have made sure Stanford got in. Oh man, their only loss was to Oregon. Well, I'm telling you, TCU was number three. Um, let's that's see. how they finished. No, no, TCU was number three from week nine all the way until the end. Yeah, but you've, you've, they seen, were, you've seen guys get jumped. And it was it was Oregon and Auburn the whole way. Oh, yeah, there's no question. Yeah, that was Cam so, Newton year. And you just, know what's yeah. crazy about the Cam Newton year? Uh, Auburn did not get to number one in the country. So late. Until the very last week of the season after they beat Alabama. And then they jumped the undefeated Oregon team. That's right. But Oregon was number one the whole rest of the time. So, yeah, that's, I, I think that some, changes some, a whole lot. Because remember, TCU, TCU beat Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. Wisconsin uh, in the BCS. the Rose Bowl, did TCU have a win coming from the Mountain West that would have gotten them there? Let's that's see. the one thing that would have been hard to – I just believe in my – nobody would have wanted to see it more than me. Nobody worships at the feet of Gary Patterson like I do. I'm just telling you, I know the individuals that run this league. So they beat, and they've run it for 100 years. They beat number 24, Oregon State, in the first game of the season. They beat Tennessee Tech. They beat Baylor. Uh, Baylor would have been a good win then. Uh, no, not then. Oh, at SMU? A- no, 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 not, not at that point. Okay. Because uh, they beat them 45-10 to 10 on the Versus Network. Uh, this is before the Big 12 stuff. This is Mountain West. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They, they win at Colorado State. They win against Wyoming, against BYU. Yeah, no, they're not letting Air that Force. team play in the BCS Hold on, Champions. at UNLV, and then at number six and undefeated Utah, they Ooh. beat them 47-7. to seven. That, yeah. So, and then they beat uh, San Diego State the next week when Gary, at New Mexico. When Gary Patterson's good. At, yes, this team good. was – just next level. Next level. Andy Dalton was the quarterback. I knew that. So, TCU that. would have had an opportunity. I would have liked to have seen it. I mean, it, yeah, it would have been great. But it, something like that, it completely changes everything. Because it, you, you're still, if you're going to put Stanford in there, you can't put them in there because Oregon beat their brains in. Yeah, but I, I, I just, I know how this league works. Yeah. So, if, I mean, if you're going to put a one-loss team in, you'd have to put Oregon in anyway. Well, yeah, you let but, Oregon go back. But TCU you know. is undefeated, and they got a big, big win under the belt. I mean, that's uh, that was a massive game. That was a massive game. 
That was a horn. Is what that was outside of our studio. Oh, he's honking. All right, so that is uh, is our top five games. Uh, do you have yours in a list? No. In a list? Me, I've got them right here. All right, here. I, I'll read mine off first. Sure. Uh, Texas Tech in Texas from 2008. Baylor TCU from 2014. Oklahoma, Alabama from 2003. Oregon Cal from 2010. Uh, Iowa State, Oklahoma State from 2011. All these games are on YouTube. Go back oh, and watch them. Go back and it's watch a lot them, of yeah. fun. I've got the 2016 Army Navy game. I got the 2018 LSU Texas A&M Super Overtime game, which changed the rule. I've got the <laughs> 2007 overtime. Fiesta Bowl, Boise State Oklahoma David versus Goliath. I've got the 2003 LSU Oklahoma National Championship Saban's first title, and I've got the 2006 Rose Bowl Texas USC. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we'll uh, we'll probably do some more of these over the summer, I would imagine. Uh, so that was that was actually a lot of fun, and we made it through a whole hour. You and I can talk about anything for an hour. I feel like usually I could cover an hour pretty easily, it, pretty pretty easily. So, and this was just one topic, one topic. All right, That's so fun. we will see you guys again next week. Thank you for hanging out. If you would share the show out, all of those great things. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.